All right, super smart second graders, it's cha time for chapter 19 of Lulu's Getting a Sister, and we're going to do 19 and a half, too. Um, it sounded in the last chapter like Lulu was kind of changing her mind about this sister thing. So let's see what happens. Chapter 19. On Saturday morning, their final morning together, Lulu took Mitzi and Fritzy for a hike. Each of them carried only their own heavy backpack. There wasn't much conversation. Not even from Mitzi, the talking machine, for they were all too busy huffing and puffing and sweating. And even though Lulu was deeply tempted to name the names of the plants in order out loud, she just said Mercury, Venus, and then stopped. After Sunday, uh, Saturday afternoon, Lulu hung out with the other sits and then She'd call, as Call Me Debbie had promised on the very first day, it was time for the great big end of camp celebration. Time for everybody at Camp Brotherhood to join with everybody at Camp Sisterhood for fun games and a yummy, delicious meal. In case you've already forgotten about the end of camp celebration, you better go back and reread chapter four. And yes, there was fun. There were games and there were some folks there were some folks might call a yummy, delicious meal. There were also many speeches, many prizes, including a swim race champion ribbon for Fritzy and two Scrabble co-champion ribbons for Mitzi and Lulu. Oops, excuse me, Lulu and Mitzi. There was also a lot of mingling among the sits and the bits, brothers in training, and their siblings, which is how the trouble began. A group from both of the camps started taking turns, one by one, shooting basket, shooting basketballs into the baskets. Lulu and Sebastian were part of the group. Sebastian was his usual untied shoelaces, breakfast all over his t-shirt self, and was scoring his usual zero basketball score. And after his 15th miss, a Camp Brotherhood bit began laughing and pointing at him, saying between ha ha ha, hey, this kid, Hey, kid, you must be doing this on purpose. No one can miss a basket that many times. After which, he poked Sebastian's food-smeared t-shirt and said, But I guess you miss getting stuff in your mouth a lot, too. This time, I swear, there really was steam coming out of Lulu's ears. She leaped in the air. She roared a ferocious roar. And then she was standing between Sebastian and the bit her eyes kind of popping out of her face and her face turning redder than red, clutching the bit's shirt collar in her fist. You don't talk to Sebastian that way ever, ever, ever. Take it back and tell him you're sorry, she said. He's a messy kid and a klutzy kid, but he's mainly my little kid. And the only one who can pick on him is me. The bigger boy mumbled, sorry, and wiggled out of Lulu's grip and darted away as quickly as he could. Sebastian stood frozen in place and mouth with amazement, with mouth opened with amazement. Then Lulu tossed the ball to him and growled, okay, now shoot. And try to remember, it's basketball, not bowling. Hmm. So, what's going on with Lulu? She just said what's going on. But I'll tell you again, Sebastian belongs to her. He is her little sibling. She protects him the way she protects all of the other stuff. Which means she won't let anybody criticize him or embarrass him or laugh at him. Anybody, that is, except herself. Okay, I hope you've got it because you'll be seeing her do this again right after Mitzi and Fritzy trick a bunch of the brothers in training into thinking that they, the twins, were only one person, which they did. After the twins were done with their trick, the bits were annoyed, then extremely annoyed, and then infuriated. For Mitzi started dancing her triumphant victory dance and shouting, we fooled you, we fooled you, we fooled you, we fooled you. And then Fritzy 
smile, her pitying smile, <coughs> and whispered quite unsoftly to her sister, we probably fooled them because they're not too smart. At this, the bits howled with anger and yelled some unfriendly words at Mitzi and Fritzy. Words like gloaters and show-offs and smarty pantses and more words like sneaky and rude and condescending. And then some more words that I can't even mention here. To which Lulu responded by doing her red faced steam coming out of her ear thing again. After which she warned the boys in the best make them a make them shiver voice. They're little, you're big, so you leave them alone, you bullies. Say one more word and I'll make you sorry you did. Then grabbing each girl by an arm, she marched them away. Both of the girls thanked Lulu for sticking up for them. Those boys were fools, said Mitzi. Those boys were such fools, said Fritzy. Those boys were fools, said Lulu, but you were too. That twin trick, that victory dancing, that gloating, that's saying that they, and saying that they weren't too smart. That's all stuff you're not supposed to do. So how come you stuck up for us, asked Lulu. So why, if they're fools, Fritzy asked, were you on our side? Because even though you can certainly sometimes be fools, replied Lulu, you're my fools. Because, she continued, half irritated and half something else, sisters have to be on each other's sides. And that, oh no. In chapter 19 and a half, sorry. I'm getting, I'm letting you figure out what that half something is. That's the end of that chapter. So um, we're seeing some big, huge changes in Lulu as a character. Can you name what those changes are? How is she different from the beginning of this book to the end of this book? Okay, make that prediction and I'll see you next time.